So now in the last video we looked at how we could split a supply voltage in half with two equal value resistors. Now we're going to split the voltage into thirds. Two thirds and one third using equal uh, value resistors right there. So the more current you need, the lower the value the resistors. Ultimately, you don't want to provide current with this voltage. You just want to provide a voltage signal. Other circuitry will look at this voltage and respond to it in some way. Inside of the 555 timer, there's three resistances where they tap into uh, the two parts where uh, two resistors come together. The side that has two-thirds of the resistance towards ground, less resistance towards the positive side, one-third of the voltage to VCC has a voltage closer to VCC, two-thirds of the supply voltage, and the side that has less resistance towards ground, more resistance towards uh, VCC, right there, since it's closer to ground resistance-wise, it's not the number of resistors, it's the total resistance. So 10,000 ohms closer to ground, 20,000 ohms closer to VCC, you end up with one third of the supply voltage. And over here, we're gonna look at the same circuit, but we have a battery symbol, and also now we're dealing with nine volts in this example here. And we got the same process. Instead of six volts being divided into four and two volts, now we have nine volts being divided into six and three volts, right there as you can see. And I wrote a note there again, it's the amount of resistance that it has to go through in relationship to the resistance to ground that determines the voltage coming out, not the number of resistors. Just with three equal value resistors, it's easy to break it into two thirds and one third supply voltage. So we got the negative side of the battery there, which is the same thing as ground when you're working with a DC supply, in this case, nine or six volts. And uh, so sometimes you'll see with the uh, battery symbol, the ground symbol as well, but I don't do that, and I don't think most people do that. And now we'll come to the multimeter part of the video. So first we're going to break open the circuit so we can measure resistance. Now you can see all the resistors go to different uh, rows right there, and there is power to the uh, rail. Technically we should turn it off, but it's still okay. This is not part of a circuit anymore. It comes to a dead end and we can measure the resistance and see that we have uh, 10,000 ohms of resistance, so uh, 9K. By the way, this is an auto ranging meter. I just have to set it to measure resistance. I only have to remove the red probe for high current. So it's said K, 9K, that's the same as 9,000 ohms. So polarity doesn't matter when it comes to measuring resistance right there. And when you measure uh, voltage, if you get the probes backwards, you just get a negative voltage there. No big deal. So again, it looks like just shy of 10,000 ohms. And for the third one, 10,000 ohms. So now we're going to put the resistor back where it was. You do not want to measure resistance when there's current flowing through there. So we will just set this to measure uh, voltage. Pretty straightforward. So you can see what's going on there. We're going to zoom back and look at the power supply. So generally you're gonna be working probably with five volts. That's most common uh, these days. So let's take a look at that first. And uh, we could have took a backward measurement and got a negative voltage. But in case it would have been the same number and uh, that's in volts, not kilovolts or anything. But uh, once I get a good connection, you can see it's pretty much spot on five volts there. Looks a little uh, shy. So now our voltage, as I said before, that we're gonna look at is in relationship to ground right there. So let's just go across the one. And it's gonna be one third of uh, five volts, which I think is like 1.6 volts, I believe, right there. And then two thirds of the supply voltage, I think is about 3.3. And I'm not getting uh, good connections uh, for some reason. But there you can see, 3.3 right there. And uh, we already looked at the total voltage. So now to make the math easier, we're gonna go uh, I don't want to turn that light on. I want to press that button. Go up to 6 right there. And so now we got 6. We're losing a little bit of voltage along the rails and whatnot. We got 3 there. and Or 2, I mean. That's right, because it's 6. So that's one third, 2. And then uh, up here we got uh, 4 volts. 2 thirds 
of 6 volts and then we'll go to 9. So these uh, basic circuit fragments they're, they're not doing anything exciting themselves unless uh, you find this exciting. I, I actually find this kind of stuff interesting how voltages get uh, divided up but uh, the main reason for doing this is just getting familiar with this circuit fragment. When you're learning about circuits that can use this circuit fragment, so we got two thirds of the supply voltage right there, you'll already understand this circuit fragment uh, completely by that point, which will help you understand what the other circuitry is doing with uh, those voltages. When you try to learn uh, this circuit fragment plus what is uh, using those uh, voltages, hopefully not taking any current at all but as little current as possible the more you try to learn at once the more confusing it will get so hopefully now that you know the uh, voltage divider fragment better the more complex circuits will make a lot more sense we should probably turn this power supply off too not uh, waste uh, power but in any case hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video